<laughs> Down here. I like doing things differently <laughs> at different times. And changing things up, you know, kind of like perspective, you know, being able to look up rather than look down, to look around rather than look right straight in front of you. I like to kind of keep myself open sometimes to perspectives that maybe I have to look at it from that point of view. You know, kind of like from that point of view. I know right now you're probably going, whoa, this is dizzy. Well, when I woke up this morning, perfect calm, nice and smooth. Then the wind started up. Well, oh well. <laughs> You're on shaky ground, so to speak, where the camera is, because I have it. Do you see a basket, possibly in the foreground or background, whichever, stage right, stage left, <laughs> then um, upstage or downstage? Then that's what the camera's in, a basket. I like kind of once in a while putting it up higher so that you get a different perspective of what's going on, you know, where I'm at. Cause I have no idea what's going on where you're at, but maybe you can get a handle on what's going on behind me when the reality of what's going on in me might be completely different. That's kind of what profiling does. See, profiling is kind of like this. Let me give you a good example. That's my profile. See the nose? That's a profile. <laughs> oh, maybe that's a proboscis. Oh, well. But... A profile is often brrr, is often something that's done on Facebook. You know, you got your profile page that tells the pro aspects of a file on you. You know, the positive things usually. Now, profiling can also be negative. Sometimes people use it in a wrong way, but it's just a tool to use anyway that the person that's reading it chooses to use it in a positive or a negative way. A lot of things are neutral that way. They can be used for positive effect or they can be used for negative effect. Matter of fact, the weirdest thing in the world is, you know this word of God that we got? It can be used in a positive way. And more often than not, most people try to use it in a positive way. But you know, there are people out there that Quite frankly, you know, do use it in a negative way. You know, they kind of use it as a hammer to beat people with. Oh, maybe they don't realize that a book isn't the best thing to drive a nail home with or a point. They try to use it as a, a stomper, you know, to stomp on something. Well, it really doesn't work much as a shoe either, you know. In fact, the Word of God really is developed and chosen to be as something that inspires us that it conspires within us to go in a different direction and to see things from a different perspective. It changes our profile. It no longer causes us to look sideways, but to look upward. Because, quite frankly, we're used to looking downward. I know my wife, you know, she's one of those kinds of people that she can't see a lot of things up here because she's short. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, that's not why she can't see things up here. My wife wears glasses and, you know, whether she admits it or not, you know, she wears these kind of like trifocal, bifocal, whatever things, and she really can't see some things because she's kind of watching her feet, you know, her depth perception is off. So she looks down a lot, you know, and doesn't see much upward. And a lot of people are like that, you know, they, they look to see where their feet are going, you know, they kind of have to be careful that way, or they put their, their eyes show, or their eyes are looking at where they go, you know. Me, I just kind of walk along looking around going, ooh, cool, you know, and if there's something down below my feet, my peripheral vision seems to catch it most of the time. I mean, I haven't fallen flat on my face yet, not with this nose, but with profiling, a lot of times the negative aspects can, when somebody's using it in a wrong way, overload what should have been the positive reasons for choosing to observe something about someone. And 
that's why sometimes you hear this in police enforcement or in law enforcement or in some kind of, you know, American way of profiling, that you hear it as a negative, you know, and yet I know in other countries profiling is used all the time, you know, it's like, hey, you know, that's a, we all you profile, as a matter of fact, hey, that's a new guy in the block, you know, they just moved in. That's profiling, you know, because you know they're not someone who was there before. You're profiling them, you're using some information to put in their file about them so that you understand where they're coming from and maybe where they're going. So profiling isn't necessarily a negative term, but often people will react to the word with a negative connotation. Sometimes Christians have that word, Christian, as a negative connotation. They are profiled as a certain kind of people. Right now I know a lot of people are profiling evangelical Christians or profiling people that are radical Islamists, you know, or profiling people that are in Islam. You know, right now I know there's this weird, 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 you know, idea that all people that you know, worship Islam or that, you know, are part of the Islamic religion are really out to kill everyone. Well, no, they're not. You know, I mean, I grew up in the 60s where, you know, quite frankly, the black power movement, you know, that was protesting, you know, Sirhan Sirhan and all kinds of other people, you know, they, a lot of those that got involved in Islam actually became peaceful rather than protest. They became more content in their direction and were learning the way of peace as opposed to learning the way of war because they were very adamant, radical, you know, extremists. Now I'll admit, inside of Islam, just like inside of Christianity, there are radical elements that are wrong, you know, and they go way out of their way, you know, to kill people. But that's not everywhere. You see, there's a lot of people that Hey, you know, they, they're worshiping the way they choose to without abusing the privilege of having that right to do so in America. So sometimes profiling gets a little weird when it comes to religion, and especially when it comes to, like, right now, Islam, because they're picking on Islam. But Christianity was the same way. I remember when Catholics used to kill Protestants, you know, in Ireland, only one of the things we kind of forget in America is we used to do the same thing. A lot of the five points riots or a lot of the things that would happen in New York, and New Yorkers know this, were Catholics fighting against Protestants, you know, Irish against, you know, whatever ethnic group else was going on. Of course, sometimes the Irish were fighting everybody. <laughs> Something about Irish, you know. Just kidding. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Don't go there. But the point is, Profiling doesn't mean that all Catholics were like that. It just meant that some Catholics were like that. You know, kind of like the Archie Bunker routine, you know. No, not everyone's an Archie Bunker. Or if you don't know what that is, that's kind of like the prejudiced epitome of all kinds of people that have the wrong ideas rolled up into one person that used to be on television. And a lot of times, we, as Christians, when we respond back, we profile in a negative way. We make the mistake of seeing people as the enemy rather than as what God sees them as. And that's why our perspective a lot of times determines our profile. When you look at someone from the side view, one aspect of them sticks out, so to speak, from a two-dimensional point of view. If you just looked at it two-dimensionally, this way to that way, this sticks out. But you see, there's more to me than two dimensions. I'm a three-dimensional being. As a matter of fact, I've got more dimensions than three. You know, I got kind of four, five, six, and seven kind of wrapped up, you know, and I'm getting ready to, you know, make sure that I've got all the rest of my spiritual dimensions down to because God is at work in us, both to do it to one of his good pleasure. So he's changing us and making us from his perspective into what he wants us to be so that we would become more like him then our profile will be his profile. He's wanting to make us, by our actions, reactions, intentions, and contentions, more like his profile. Now, i got to admit, when people profile God, they come up with some pretty weird ideas. And you know, that's kind of what happens with the problem of 
not really knowing the Word of God, when you don't know the Bible, you profile things in a, dare I say, narrow way. You don't have the full picture. You don't have the complete pieces of the puzzle to put together. If you've ever put together a jigsaw puzzle, you know, like a thousand pieces, if you're missing one or two, that stands out blatantly obvious. Man, if you ever put one of those thousand pieces pictures, you know, and it's like right in the middle, boy, you just can't help but focus in on the missing piece. And sometimes that's kind of what happens with Christians' ideas about God. You know, they profile him in a certain way, but they're missing a piece of the puzzle, which might most often that I found is love. One of the biggest pieces that I see when people talk about the God of the Old Testament, they don't see him as love. <laughs> okay, you know, because they, they want to make him like that God versus this God, you know, old T versus new T. You know, it's all for me, not one T over the other T, you know, because quite frankly, I like Earl Grey in the morning and I like, you know, chamomile tea at night, you know, I mean, it's just one of those things, you know, little crumpets in the morning, you know, and a little, you know, kind of like cookie at night, you know, maybe, maybe she loves the sugar too, you know, kind of like a little cream. Oh, you don't do tea? Oh, okay. Then it's Pepsi. <laughs> but having said that, do you see how fast we react to tea as opposed to Pepsi? Profiling. Oh, we have prejudices, biases, opinions, ideas, sometimes information, and sometimes evaluation that can be used either positively or negatively depending upon our perspective, whether we're looking down on someone or we're looking up to someone. When we look up to someone, we only see the good, you know, like our heroes. I don't know how many times I've seen so many modern heroes put up on a pedestal, you know, like Tiger Woods. Boy, he could do no wrong. Now, the people that worked with Tiger Woods, the people that played with Tiger Woods, they knew what Tiger Woods was like. <laughs> it wasn't a big shock to them when the truth came out. And that's usually what happens when somebody's close to you, they know what you're like. Somebody that's intimate with you, oh, they know who you are. And that's what God is like when you get to know him in a personal, intimate way. You know the truth about God because you know God. Now, people may have profiled him through the centuries in different ways. I know that the Catholics, you know, during their golden era, you know, Michelangelo, during that artistic, you know, flair that they have, they used to create all these beautiful cathedrals, great, fantastic sculptures and paintings. And so people got carried away with this, oh, we got God on steroids, you know, and they made God into these monster big Italian kind of looking, you know, Anglo-Saxon versions, you know, that were like, my God, these guys are big, you know, they got muscular. And the reason why they did that mostly was because it was kind of an experimental stage in art where they were discovering all the musculature that goes on inside the body. It was a European style, you know, version. And in America, we do something similar. We make everybody skinny, you know. <laughs> We think that skinny is good. Hey, there was a time when voluptuous was voluptuous. Wow. They were wonderful. Now, we, we think that, you know, like, if you've got a skinny as a rail, that's what you want to do. You know, it's like you want to make them look like a nail, you know. <laughs> well, you know, such as it is, art is art. But God's perspective has always been, it's not about the outward things, but the inward. It's not about what you think you see or you think you know, but about what you have interpersonal communication and cooperation in the knowledge thereof in getting to know the person intimately. And that's what profiling sometimes doesn't do. It doesn't bring you into a closeness and an intimacy. But God has always desired that we wouldn't be profiled, but that we would be inspired by what we learn from profiling. We can learn a lot about God from the Word of God. We can learn all there is to know, really, that God is revealed in the Scriptures, and yet still 
be wrong. Really? Yeah. Because you see, if you don't talk to God, if you don't ask Him what He meant, if you don't try to understand Him as He relates to you, then you're never going to get a complete picture of the Word of God or even Jesus Himself until you talk to Him. Because, you see, the book, not just this book as being spiritually discerned, because that's easy to say to any evangelical. They'll go, ah, you don't understand it until your Spirit of God reveals it to you and blah, blah, blah. So we have those excuses for the natural man receiving not the things of the Spirit. But when the spiritual man messes it up, we call them cults or you know false teachers or somehow stomping and romping and chomping and beating them to death you know with what we know when we don't know all there is to know anyways because you see when god wanted to be profiled he said hey look i don't like being called by any name so i'm not going to give you a name and so we messed that one up we decided to say that the i am is a name well no it's not it's really not if you read it in context, God was trying to tell Moses, look, don't try to give me a name. You're going to mess it up. Who shall I say that comes? Tell them that I, I, I am. I, you know, I'm, it's just me. You know, I'm, I'm God. You know, God. God came. I am that I am. You know, I will be what I will be. You know, don't, don't try to put a name on me because you'll mess it up. They messed it up. <laughs> now we got people running around claiming the name. You know, well, it's yud heh vav -Hey. It's Yahweh. It's Jehovah. It's J-H. WH, it's you know, yo, 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 yo. some of these guys get into yahoos and woohoos and boo boos and goo boos and you know, God only knows some of the goofy stuff that they come up with. I happen to know because I happen to sometimes have to talk about some of these wrong profiles when they start profiling God and making other people have to believe it. They're wrong <laughs> about a lot of things. And it's obvious when they're wrong against the scriptures because if you're taking it out of some place other than the Bible, you ain't right. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're wrong. And it's going to be a long story before you get back to what's right. But the point being is that when God wants to reveal himself in a personal way, when God wants to show you something intimately, he does it through Jesus. He gave us his son so that we would know what the physical manifestation of God is like. We could know what God is like in a personal and intimate way by knowing Jesus. As a matter of fact, it's so much so says that in the scripture that even Jesus said that this is eternal life. This right here, it's not about living forever, you know, ages to ages life. That's something different. That's eonio, you know, which goes on from age to age to age to age and on and on and on and on and on and on and never ends. You know, it just keeps going and going and going and going. You know, it's better than the... The bunny who keeps on ticking, you know, takes a licking, you know, or actually keeps on running, you know. And, you know, the bunny, you know, he's kind of like better than these guys because these guys, their battery wore out. But the point being is that rather than telling us in the Hebrew, ages to ages life, or eonio in the Greek, but God said that this is eternal life, that you should know me. Wow. Wow. Cool. Well, that ought to take maybe five minutes, right? No God, you know, I mean, that's pretty simple. Except, when you suddenly realize, wait a minute, uh, hold the horses. God's not a man. Now, when somebody creates something, can the creation get to know the creator of it fully? Probably not. <laughs> Even logic says, you might be messed up. <laughs> you might profile it, but you're not going to know it all you know, intimately, personally. And yet, God says, but you will gradually know me. You'll go through a process of knowing me. You will, as I develop that in you, become aware and become knowledgeable of who I am, what I am, how I am, where I am, the, the whole routine, you know, like, cool, you know, we're getting into the God thing, you know, we're doing the God perspective. The God shuffle, they, you know, it's not the, when it, what do they call that, you know, the Harlem shuffle, or the Harlem, whatever it is, you know, they're doing the kind of like, you know, we're dancing and shaking, whatever, because they're acting like a bunch of idiots. Hey, let's do the God shuffle, you know.
think they're making themselves out to be gods, but they'll die like me. But the point is, is that God, throughout time and beyond time, after time has quit and has ended, is still going to be teaching us or revealing to us, more is the better word, that we will constantly be knowing God in a personal, intimate way beyond what we think of as comprehension or teaching or learning. We'll be more so in each age discovering something that made that an age. What? I don't know. It's just like a never-ending story, and it just keeps getting better, <laughs> which is kind of cool. I like that, because there'll be a new heaven, a new earth, you know, and we're going to keep going on and on and on and on and on. Will there be a new heaven, a new earth after that? Most likely, according to the word. So the beauty of that is that we can't limit profiling, you know, God in some way that we've decided that we know God. We can't limit Jesus in profiling him and say, oh, well, you know, we got it. You know, because after all, you know, we got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What more do we need? Or now we've added, you know, some other books that really, Book of Enoch and some of these other wackos, you know, it's like, no. Uh-uh. I ain't going there. Sorry. She's wrong. Throw it out. Because a lot of people, when they wanted to, you know, kind of make it easier to understand God, they couldn't get the reconciliation between, you know, old T and new T, so they said, let's make up some more of me, you know, and they kind of put themselves into the book, you know, and they kind of write some things that make it seem like it might fit, you know, according to their understanding. Well, frankly, I kind of like the idea that God goes beyond my understanding. You know, if I could figure God out, I wouldn't be a Christian. <laughs> That's the truth. Now, I'll admit my IQ is not so small, and it's not so large that, you know, I think that I'm a smart aleck or a genius, but I'm not exactly stupid either, you know, it's like, if any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing at all. That's a pretty high IQ. <laughs> it puts us in our right perspective when it comes to dealing with God. But when you get to the realization that you can't know God in the way that you think you can know Him, you become better in the realm of appreciation of God as he is, as Jesus brought him into a intimacy with us, we begin to appreciate him as Father rather than God. Because, no offense, but, you know, I saw what happened every time somebody goes to heaven, you know, I mean, I don't mean the guys that, you know, say, well, they had some out-of-body experience, you know, or they had some translucional dis dissolution of their physical realm and they somehow, you know, went to heaven and they talked it over, you know, came back and, you know, they're going to tell us what heaven's like. Yeah, you know, I got somebody who's been there, done that, written it down, told us and we got it, you know, so it's like, it's okay, you know, if you've been there, you know, you've had one of those out-of-body experiences, if it lines up with the book of Revelation, I'm all for it, <laughs> but if it don't, <laughs> you might have had kind of like an interesting profile. <laughs> Okay, but I'm not going there. And, uh, you know, don't get me wrong, I do believe that a lot of people can do that. You know, a lot of us probably have, you know, we won't talk about it. Because to do so would be sin. Yeah, because, man, it's so much better up there than it is down here. We want to split and get out of here. <laughs> we said, don't worry. Sort of. So, the reality of where we are about who we know is always limited by how we perceive from our perspective where we're coming from to who we're going to in our present circumstances of life as we live it. Sometimes some bad you know, experience might limit our appreciation of God for who he is by trying to add to his profile by saying, God, why'd you let that happen? You know, you make get bad things happen to good people. <laughs> you know, like dogs. <laughs> you don't feed a dog, they get kind of like grumpy. <laughs> you don't feed a man, guess what? <laughs> Weigh a man's heart through his stomach. If you want to keep a man happy, feed that sucker. <laughs> well, you know, within reason. Because you know, otherwise you're going to get a fat guy sitting on the couch going, yeah, feed me, buddy. Because <laughs> men, when we can get that, hey, bring it on. You know, 
we'll eat, eat, drink, and be merry, and we'll not worry about tomorrow we die. And we'll just sit there and go, ooh, I got a free ride. <laughs> you betcha I'm going to drink, you know, and eat, and do it. Because I can get away with it. So, recognizing that maybe our perspective might be a little skewered when we're looking to the left or to the right, or we kind of looking around trying to find something about God. More often than not, looking will lead us to the place of appreciation as opposed to delineation or separating ourselves from the reality of what God wants us to be like. Because one of the things that we're not supposed to be profiled as is a hater. You know, we're not supposed to have in our, call it our Facebook profile now. You know, you're not supposed to have like under your Facebook profile, you know, hate. You know, that's just not one of those things you normally associate with, you know, Christians. Now, I'll admit some people try to profile Christians as haters. No, they're not. It's not what Jesus said. Or idolaters, you know, like loving their dogs more than people or loving their cats more than people. Well, you know, that's really loving the creature more than the creator. That's really not what God said. You know, your profile should be more about the God so loved the world than it should be about God trying to eliminate the world, destroy it, you know, the end of the world's coming. There should be something about Jesus in your profile that's pointing to and causing someone to know you know, the heart little routine that everybody does lately, you know, kind of like one of those things. That's a heartbeat. <laughs> but there should be something in your profile or your person or the reality of who you are that begins to reveal, you know, if someone gets to know you, who you really are. You know, are you really one of those types of people that hates people? No. You love them. But Jesus said, you know, it's easy to love them that love you. What about those who hate you, miserably use you, despitefully you know, abuse you? Do you love them? Because your father does. So you see, the profile of God is often mistaken by the perspective of how people appreciate God himself. If you appreciate God in a holy way, you might stand far back and look at him from a distance and not see the intimacy of the relationship that Jesus had with his father that said, hey, I'll go. I'll go tell them about you. I'm looking forward to it. I'll even die so that they can know you better. Because Jesus said that. He wanted us to know his father. He was so adamant about it that he wanted us to not be misled, deceived, profiling each other or God in a wrong way. But he wanted us to take the time to learn about God so that the only thing we could say of God, the only thing that we would sum up the profile of God would be what John said, God is love. Now, I'll admit, it, most people I meet, that's not their first thought about God. I'll ask them, you know, what, what's God like? Well, God is just. Okay, they got that out of the Old Testament. God is righteous, God is true, God is this, God is that. God is Jesus. You know, like, oh, well, yeah, okay, that's cool. You know, that's but you know, really, the ones I like, the words I like, the thing I profile my God with, my Lord and my God, every time, although I get pretty close to the mercy and grace a lot, <laughs> you know, I kind of hang on to that one a lot. You know, like, first words is God is love, second is mercy and grace. <laughs> Because if you ask me what I think God is like, or how I profile God, or what God is, my first words are going to be God's love. He proved it. He demonstrated it through his son. I mean, that's obvious to me. I was like, hey, don't even need to be said twice. God is love. Obviously, everything in the Old Testament is love. And you're going to look at me like, I am out of my mind. Are you nuts? He killed off you know, all those tribes. He wiped out these people who did that. I'm going to take you really want to sit down and figure out how that can be loved, I'll spend a few days with you. <laughs> but, me, because his mercy endures forever and his grace has been made manifest to me and I've seen what he's done with his own son, 
I have no problem with all that God has done. It boils down to one simple profile of who God is. And that is 